Hi folks. Um, Coding Freaks is here. I am decided to make a new series on screencast and although I have to do a lot of stuff um, in continuation other series like B2C, I decided to do this because um, I work here in DevOps, in Azure DevOps uh, every day and that's why I decided that it's time um, to make a new series here and that's starting today. So I prepared a little agenda currently, which is in my head, um, and this is the agenda. Um, so I will start today with the introduction and kind of organizational ramp up. Next time uh, I'm going to configuring new team projects and showing you stuff there. Then we work with repositories, pipelines, releases will a single part, artifacts and maybe custom templates and maybe more. So I am missing here some stuff. For instance, uh, work items, uh, which uh, which means Kanban boards, boards, uh, work item planning, uh, work item design, requirement engineering, stuff like that. And I'm missing uh, user tests or test management uh, completely because it's kind of the other side of DevOps, the non-technical side. And I decided, well, Coding Freaks is more like the technical side. But if you're interested in seeing stuff here and how we do this and how we... Um, uh, use DevOps here, uh, feel free to um, go to the social uh, on YouTube or on Twitter, uh, contact me and uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start with um, today's agenda. So the organizational ramp up will be let's get some wordings clear because my customers are um, often pretty confused um, about stuff here. Let's look at the pricing for, for users and then leave PowerPoint and go to the hands-on, creating a new organization, different types, uh, are different ways are possible here. Let's look at important settings, setting up the profile, personal access tokens, which is always a big question. What is it and for what is it good? And then the preview features will close up the today's session, kind of. Okay, let's go ahead. Wording. There are two things which are important. First of all, the DevOps organization, which we'll cover today, and then the team project, which we'll cover in the next part. The organization on the first side, on the left side, is where everything starts. So you collect users there, um, which means members of your organization, and you collect team projects there. And you have some global settings um, and security assignments you can do there. The organization uh, can first of all be created on a private level using a microsoft account or you can create it on a corporate level which means you link it to an azure tenant an azure ad directory um, an azure active directory that's correct uh, and then you, in the in the second part you also can link it to an azure subscription which means uh, if you go uh, to the paid level you will get paid on for a corporate on Azure subscriptions and uh, the private thing is different. So um, the organization has to have a unique name. That's pretty important because it's part of a URL, the organization name. Uh, so if it's taken, you can assign it, which will hit us today because uh, some guy decided Coding Freaks is a cool name, which is you know, true, first of all, it is. And no, it's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's not protected by any law. You can take it and somebody decided to do this. And that's why we hit this limitation today. Um, okay, the team project on the other side is where work, uh, source code, tests, whatever is collected. Um, and it's, it is this, it is a team project, it had nothing to do with um, Microsoft Teams from M365. Um, and... Uh, you can have inside a team project, you can have multiple teams. Mm. That's pretty confusing overall. And it gets even more confusing if you are a customer who already has a local installed the DevOps, which is not an Azure DevOps, which is a DevOps uh, on-prem. And w things are pretty different there on a historical level. And I'll cover this later on the wording confusion. Um, okay, with with... There are no limits I know. You can have as many DevOps organization as you can come up with names without uh, uh, generating costs just by creating organizations. As far as I know, maybe at some point Microsoft will call you and tell you, well, that's kind of a DevOps troll 
acting here, I don't know. And inside one organization, on the other end, you can has, have as many team projects as you like uh, without getting paid for it. When it comes to payment, it's uh, basically the first and foremost thing is you pay in certain scenarios for users, for user licenses. What's important here is um, there is a license name which is called basic user. Uh, it's not a good name. I think Microsoft should change it to something like contributor or something else because a basic user is what it basically says is he can do everything <laughs> because the other user there is a so-called stakeholder. It's another license type. You can have as many stakeholders as you like without paying them because they are pretty limited in the features they can use from Azure DevOps. They, the, uh, the, the purpose here is mainly uh, controllers or stakeholders on customer side, which are interested in the progress of the, of the project, can have informational access, just read access to uh, the DevOps project. Um, good news is Visual Studio Pro and enterprise subscribers don't count for basic users. They are already paid because they are paying the Pro or enterprise subscription. I, for myself, have an enterprise they are uh, free to use uh, DevOps organizations, even if those organizations are not in, um, in their uh, inventory. So in my case, my customers, um, a lot of my customers invite me to their DevOps organization and uh, they don't get charged for my uh, participation because I already pay this on my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. Testing is expensive and uh, there's another area where costs can come from. We don't cover this today. It is uh, the pipelines. Um, the pipelines are limited to currently 1,800 minutes, I think, per month. You can have pipelines, uh, I think it's 30 hours. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, and um, if you go beyond 30 hours for continuous integration, continuous deployment, stuff like that, you have to pay. We'll cover this on later sections. Okay, let's do it an example. Let's say you have five team members, you don't pay. Uh, on, on one organization. I don't talk about team project count here. So let's say, for instance, those two guys are working on project A and those uh, three guys on project B and those three guys also on project C. doesn't matter. It's uh, always paid on the organization. So now you invite other people which uh, happen to have uh, Visual Studio subscriptions, uh, which De Pro or Enterprise, which means no matter how many you invite, they don't cost you anything to your project. Uh, then you decide you need two more basic users because you have two developers. Uh, you have to bring them in external, let's say, and they don't. Uh, they are not one of them, and they don't have a subscription. So now you have to pay, and it will cost you around five bucks euros a month. That's that are monthly costs uh, per user. So you end up with like, let's say 10. And let's say then your stakeholders say they want to do user testing. Now you need this basic and tester uh, subscription inside of DevOps. And it comes around 43 per month, something like that. And you end up with 130 bucks a month for those three guys. And then you have 140 to pay. Um, so that will be an example how you can generate money on Microsoft side uh, with using uh, DevOps. Most projects I know uh, are uh, living in this scenario and uh, are not generating costs at all. Okay, um, by the way, for students or schools, it's a different thing. Um, you should check out uh, the programs Microsoft has and plus, uh, I don't know very students, very much student projects where you have beyond five people. Uh, I don't know, maybe there are, sure there are, but people like this are often not using DevOps. I don't know why, but they aren't. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead uh, and then leave this uh, PowerPoint thing and let's go to, first of all, an incognito uh, window, in private window. That's the German way of saying you are private now, so now you know. And your URL you want to um, hit is devazure.com without any slash behind. Um, so because I'm in, a, in private window now, he says, okay, I don't know if you are somebody who has already something. It's a good starting point. And let me just show you 
the um, the starting point for users which are not part of a corporate. They just want to do it for their own or for a small team, which is not a company. Okay, let's go ahead and start free. So what he wants now from us is he wants um, something, either um, uh, a business account or a Microsoft account. And I'll do this one. Um, this is my throwaway Microsoft account. Um, go ahead. And then I need a password and I just get it from KeePass here. And let's say no, because it's in private, makes no sense, but anyway. So now he says, okay, cool. You are good to go because um, you are, uh, I recognized you, you are authenticated. And I, I've seen that you have nothing um, in your inventory. You have no team project and no organization at all. So he says, get started with Azure DevOps means, hey, create a new organization or whatever. Um, uh, and he, he's going on the um, project name. So let's go here and let's call it my test project and say it's a visibility of private and go ahead and SPX 5 S 5 P whatever. Um, and now he's taking me to my DevOps organization, which I wasn't able uh, to name by the way. Um, that's kind of a different experience if you are on the corporate level. Let's wait here. And um, now if I go to Azure DevOps, he says your organization is named um, by your username by default. So he's taking the Life ID name and saying, okay, that's your organization because this is a natural link. Now you see here, you can go ahead and add more organizations um, by just simply going here and then saying, uh, let's say this one, you can choose where it lives and just fill it out. And then you have more than one organization. Okay, here's your test project. Uh, we will go there later in more detail when we go on the corporate level. Interestingly enough, you might have noticed, noticed that there's a magical URL called dev azure.com is clear. And now there is this AEX, uh, dev azure.com portal, which is pretty interesting because over time you can collect a huge number of organization memberships here, uh, which can get a problem uh, because you, I was a member of teams like four years ago. And now when I go here with my corporate account, I see teams which I uh, didn't contribute to for a long time. And now how you leave the organization. So so here is um, the thing. I can't leave my own organization because it's my own. But uh, you have a leave button here somewhere when you are on other organizations. So AEX is pretty um, interesting for you um, and pretty important. So now we have this. Um, from now on, I have this organization. Feel free to DDoS it or whatever. Uh, it's just living there and that's it. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just uh, leaving my incognito window here and now going to my real window, which is um, dev azure.com because this thing is connected to um, my uh, business con uh, account. And now you can see here my uh, company's DevOps, which is DevDeer is the name. And you see um, here my organization, I own, only have one organization on or my company and uh, I'll go here and create a new one. So that window is kind of different because now he recognized that I am coming in with an Azure AD uh, identity. And now he says, well, you know what? Maybe you want to switch the directory, uh, which is he's bringing me all the directories AKA tenant he knows I'm member of. And I could, with, if I have the privileges, uh, um, the role assignments in those tenants, I could create a, an Azure DevOps organization in one of those tenants behind here. So I stick with DevDeer. And now I go ahead and try Coding Freaks. And as I told you, I can't because some sucker did it already. Sorry, did I say it really? So. Let's do it uh, by Z. Let's live in West Europe 
And let's do the Wii for the weird capture thing. I don't know what, why this is even necessary. I don't know if it's capital or not. I don't know. So, um, that was obviously wrong. S, P, V, R, V, D, N, J, N, L, I think. I don't know. So what is going on? Um, four five Y. Is it a lower P four Q four? I think this is true. Watch me doing the capture thing. This is already existing. This is not existing. I hate it. K H R H. What is it? Yeah, K. K K oh K K K I didn't say it X K W what the oh, man you know what um, maybe I'll go back to devazure.com yeah nearly devazure.com today is uh, German reunion day by the way let's clear the caches let's go here uh, let's Clear the caches again. Let's go again. Let's say coding freaks. It's good uh, to that you watch me doing this stuff because that's happening all the time. And I just don't cut it out. You can skip forward as soon as as you don't see. Yeah, as soon as you don't see typing me, uh, that means I went through. So. You know what, I think, because I did a test previously and deleted it, um, I think he is uh, super excited because he says this guy is already existing, although he's not checking it here. So let's see if this works out. KSX 5 W S 4 P Y N. So maybe now. Oh, looks better. You see, so this is typical. Um, in the, this UI is not consistent. Um, so now I'm ending here with coding freakers, whatever. Um, I will change it later on, and the next part will hopefully be um, on coding freaks uh, again with the. Um, but anyway, so now here it is. We have a new DevOps organization. Let's go ahead and don't take care about this one. It's a corporate one now because I linked it to my corporate identity and now go here on the bottom left to the organization settings and let's take a look here. So what's interesting here is first of all it's inconsistent again. You can choose images all over the place like you know this images but for some reason I don't know why uh, you are stick with the image they present you here. You can change it. At least I didn't found any option to change it. But anyway, uh, what he's saying here is you can change this uh, thing uh, by time. So maybe I later on can change it to the correct name. Uh, and he's presenting you with the new URL. So what does he mean with new URL? Because you can't you can't switch to the old one. That's not that uh, hard. You can anytime shift to this URL, the visualstudio.com version, and you will see exactly the same, and he's redirecting you. But what he supposes you hear is, if you want to stick with codingfreaks.visualstudio.com, you can do this here. So Microsoft decided, just to give you a background, uh, like I think um, one and a half years ago, I don't know exactly, I can't remember those timestamps, that it is not a good idea to provide this product, Azure DevOps, how it's called now, with all the references to Visual Studio. Like the Azure DevOps um, formerly was called Visual Studio Team Services, which obviously led people in the market to the opinion that this is only interesting for Visual Studio guys. And now uh, they recognized it and they changed it to devazure.com, which is uh, more open to other people. And it's good they did it. So 
besides those information, the important first imp important one is this one with the time zone. So I'm uh, living somewhere here. So don't forget to save this. And now this is important because your timestamps in some cases don't make sense if you uh, don't do this correctly. I'm the owner. I can um, change the owner. There's always one owner, I think, on organizations. Um, yes, only one owner, but more administrators. And you can delete the organization here, um, which is a pretty dangerous thing. And only the I think the owner can do it. Yeah, that's it. Um, you have a list of projects. And here is the first uh, or the next important part, the users. So let me explain what you see here. As I told you in the beginning in the introduction PowerPoint, um, there are several access levels, they call it, call it license, whatever. And the best to explain it is to invite a user. So if I invite a user, let's say blah, blah, at blah, blah, de, or let's take my, you know what, let's take my uh, uh, at outlook de. So let's invite this guy. And let's say, you know, I will invite him as a basic user to this DevOps organization as a basic user. Basic, remember, is full access. I don't have projects, so I don't can assign them to one. And now I can do, I, I just leave it out, don't send an email, and I say, okay, add him. So now this takes a little bit, and now he's invited. Okay, what this means is I can go here copy out this URL and go to incognito window, a uh, private window again, and go here. And now he's asking me, who are you? So he's assuming I'm a deaf deer uh, identity, but I'm not. Um, I tell him, I know what, I don't care. I'm coming from outside. And he's saying, okay, you are a Microsoft account. That's cool. Let me get my password from KeePass one more time. I'm going in. He's checking if I'm invited and if I'm invited, I'm presented with this screen, which means, you know what, uh, DevDeer, um, the organization would like to read out those information from your profile. Are you fine with this? Yes, I am. And now I'm going in and I should present it now. With this thing, which means I can uh, choose a display name. Mm, let's say, uh, ms account and uh, this is the mail address they reach me i can change it later on uh, so the login name will stay this one but i can choose another mail address to be saved in devops which is pretty nice and then i come in and i'm presented with an empty one oops something went wrong because i don't have permission on any project so if I go now to the organizational settings, everything is grayed out. I can see it and see who the owner is. I can't delete it and stuff like that. So this is um, the first user. And now on the other side, if I hit refresh here, he's uh, seeing that my invitation was uh, done. My last access set has happened and I'm a basic user. So because this identity I'm using here, this one, um, is not uh, linked to a Visual Studio subscription. So what happens if you invite a user and you don't know if he is a Visual Studio subscriber? So what you can do, you can always assume that he has a subscription, invite him by mail, and then send out the invitation. Because whenever this registration process happens, or the user logs in, actually, um, the, the thing will check if there is a studio subscription linked and he will update this. So if he's three years member on the basic access level and after three years and one day he decides to buy himself a Visual Studio subscription, then from that day on um, Azure DevOps will detect this if it's linked correctly to this identity and will say, okay, you don't have to pay anymore for this user. So keep this in mind. And you have to double check this all the time. Okay, um, cool. Uh, now that we have this, you can see here that it's, you know, when I go here, I don't have um, an avatar. And for instance, to skip a little bit f forward, you, you can go here 
or you can go here and say profile now it's english that's cool and you can here on this position you can do a lot of thing Let, let's go here and give me a coding freaks logo uh let's go there and give me this guy choose this image save is it okay for you you can uh, later on change the things you did here let's call me coding freaks what is going on was it too big i don't know because those windows are tend to be uh no it, it's okay tend to be uh crap at microsoft level two so this is cool and now i have a time and local on um, based on my browser preferred language stuff like that uh, in devops okay to be honest notification theme whatever we can uh, watch this later on and after i did this a cache refresh is not working because this takes a while to be uh, transmitted here um, but we will see it later on okay users billing is interesting um okay coding freaks currently when i uh, create a new subscription and you see i'm um uh, uh here connected and currently billing is not set up uh, that means that this organization is on a uh, free tier and i can sh i can't change all this stuff i can start a free trial which is not valid for me for the basic and test plans the expensive ones here are the basic users here's the free five basic users that i told you um and uh now uh, the, here are the pipelines which I can't I have the 1800 minutes free per month but that's it so if I want to set up the billing um, I have to go here and waiting wait for my subscriptions to load what does subscriptions mean all subscriptions he is detecting that I'm member of um which does not mean that i'm capable of assigning an azure devops organization to any of those subscription depends on my rights in those subscriptions i have to know this but i know that my dev tier default subscription is um in in my access so you have to wait here a little bit it can fail uh to load your subscriptions in some cases um um, especially when you create a new organization so a cache refresh uh, control f5 or whatever your browser thing is uh, should help out here so let's wait uh, till this loads and i'll select one so i did this i selected a subscription um, and now uh, i'm able to uh, hit here and go and say paid parallel jobs yes or no um so if i go here you see instantly the free tier disappears and i'm uh, not only have one parallel job which is a microsoft hosted cicd pipeline um, i cover this later when we go to pipelines uh, no i'm not limited in minutes anymore when i do one paid parallel job i automatically have no limit on the uh, cicd which is what i want so i go to save um, so that means from that this moment on whenever i go over 1800 minutes i'll get paid on this subscription in azure okay cool um let's go to important settings i'll skip some settings here now um so let's go to azure active directory because that is pretty important what you see here is um this is an a devops organization which is uh, connected to an ad and this is a typical corporate one so i'm connected to this tenant and i can uh, switch the directory that's pretty important um, because it can be that you are having two directories in your corporation and you are testing out stuff and then you decide well that went from testing to production pretty quick and that's the moment where you uh, maybe decide to switch the directory of this devops organization um, including all the projects and stuff because this is important because moving a team project or something manually uh, exporting importing call it what you want from one organization to another is pretty hard uh, and i think you won't be able to do it without any data loss if you you are using more than just source code if you're using work items and builds build pipelines and you are connecting all the stuff together 
then you finally you get the information uh, transferred but all the links between the information for instance are lost so that's why switching directory is a data loss free process uh, and you can also say well that's no longer part of the company if you're the owner uh, disconnected from devt.com which which had side effects on billing and stuff like that okay let's go over to security security is always important uh, and let's take a look what's possible here um um, for instance, here in the first part, you have to select the connection policies and you should leave this on because it's more secure if you do. So you have SSH, the ability to connect and third party applications um, like, uh, for instance, I have um, here uh, Git Kraken for connecting to this. They are using OAuth and that's it. Um, then interesting enough as a company you can as you can decide that no no projects you have inside your organization will will have the possibility to be publicly visible so um, you will see this when we create our first project that you can decide if it's public or not if you switch it off you can't decide it on creating projects um, you can have uh, conditional access policy validation, which is also pretty important if you are a member of a corporate. So if they use conditional access for device stuff and a location check or whatever, you can switch it on. Uh, you can forbid external guest access as an owner or admin. And um, you can um, uh, forbid... Uh, the team project team and project admins to invite new users so that will mean you are pretty strict we don't do this but could be valid for you and um, you have the request access possibility let's say uh, somebody says i want access to that feature so you can switch it off too to if you feel yourself bothered by the people do it another interesting thing and now it comes to wording again is um, this window so what you see here is permissions and permission first of all says you can do it uh, on looking on the groups which on other places Microsoft would prefer be called roles I think but anyway it's called groups here and the, the next thing which is pretty confusing people is what is the hell a project collection what is it? Um, because I know what an administrator is, a built administrator I can imagine too. Um, what is, I don't know what that is. I, I know it, but people say they, they don't know what it is and so on. But what the hell is a project collection? So historically, uh, congratulations, Reben, to uh, have the time now. Uh, let's uh, leave Steam. Historically, um, from TFS, Team Foundation Server, which is a grand grandfather of Azure DevOps, um, he's inheriting here some words. And I told you uh, in, let me show you this just real quick, in this slide that there are two words, DevOps organization and project. And you can say that the DevOps organization formerly was called the project collection. So, if you will, I, I told you that a DevOps organization can contain projects. So that's why they were called project collections. The real reason why this was true is because um, the TFS, the Team Foundation Server, I, don't, I, I can't say nothing about Azure DevOps, but I assume it's still the case, um, is using SQL Server as a backend. I don't know if... Um, if Azure DevOps does it or if they're doing cloud storage or whatever. But the on-prem version is using SQL Server. So, and what they did, they said, if you create a new organization on on-prem, that will mean you install TFS on a server. That's an organization. So there's a lot of stuff. And then this TFS installation uh, will create eventually a SQL database. And that SQL database uh, is where your team projects are generated, your users are generated, your work items, whatever. So that is the team, uh, the project collection. That's why they call it this name. So when you are an administrator on that level, 
regarding the organization, you are as high as you can get. So as you can see, here are two members, project collection service accounts, which are those guys are member of the project collection administrators. And uh, I'm member too, because I created this thing. And this is uh, the first thing, but what do, I, what do I do with this Microsoft account? So the, the main thing, what you do, and you can see it here on the bottom, project collection valid users is kind of the bucket where you put all the normal users into. Um, so you have a group relationship and you see here an, another thing, uh, you see project level groups and you see project valid users uh, on, for instance, my first project on blah, blah. And this is automatic, automatically get uh, filled. And here you can view another level of uh, membership, again, groups on the project level and teams and whatever. And now you can drill in and you see nobody's member. And when we go to the create a team section, you will see, ah, oh, okay, that's, that's why they are not members, but not today. It's, it's just, I wanted to, to show you the permissions. So if you uh, want to add a user just to valid users, you don't have to do anything. You just add them to the team, which you see in the second part. If you want to define, let's say administrators, you can invite them like here, like uh, put them into the members. And interesting enough, if you want to say you're not a complete admin, but you are, you can create and uh, manage the build pipelines, you can add them here and so on. Okay, that is permissions. Keep in mind permissions on the organization level. We are not looking at projects here. That's second part. Okay, next part, the process. Uh, here's the point I'll, uh, I have shown this um, in the agenda, I told you on the last point here on the bottom, I will talk about custom project templates uh, eventually. And when I when we talk about this, this is a point where we start talking. That means you can have predefined, you have predefined um, project templates, process templates, and you can create uh, custom ones. And that's a point where you can, you know, manage them. Okay, cool. Um, then another important point is not the agent pools, but the settings here. And I want to point out, and this is really, really important. This setting here, which uh, reads limit you uh, limit job offer. Uh, once again, limit job offer authorization scope to current project for non release pipelines. So let's take this sentence. Uh, into scope. Non-release pipelines, in other words, are build pipelines, mainly. Okay, then the job authorization scope um, is pretty important because whenever you authorize uh, things to access, let's say, Azure to deploy something, or, and that is the case pretty often, if you have something like a private registry for stuff, NuGet org, um, Docker uh, Hub, uh, Azure Artifacts, whenever you have stuff like that, you will see that you can connect those external repositories which need um, some sort of authentication into your team project. You will see this in the second part. But on this point, you can already set this off and tell him, and trust me, you will see a lot of less pain if you use this. You could switch this off. I'll leave it on for the moment. But um, in the second part, I'll show you in the deep dives, I'll show you why this is so important. And we struggled so much because of this freaking switch here. Um, and this is pretty important, this switch. Okay, there are other switches which are pretty good explained here, but it's pretty good hidden. Uh, it's hidden pretty good here in inside of pay pipeline settings or whatever. This is a point, this is pretty important. Um, okay, or of configurations, uh, I don't use this very, very often, whatever. Um, so you have artifact storage, we cover this later. That's pretty it. So we are um, done here with the basic setup. And let's uh, head over to this profile thing. And for this, 
um, last step, let me switch over to my profile and first of all, check if the image now finally came. Let's go here to users and let's see if a cache, no, it's not working. Oh, I hate him. I hate him so much. Yeah, you see here and it's not correct because at some point he will do it and you have the avatar. The avatar is pretty uh, important for uh, Azure DevOps, but let me see, am I correct here by the way? This is this is pretty interesting. Let, let me see, Azure DevOps, I'm at Coding Freaks and now let me go into my profile. Yeah, I'm correct, okay. I just want to check this out, okay. Here are the profile uh, settings. And the main thing besides something like notifications, we'll talk this over later. Uh, let me just load it. So as a user, you can decide which of those notifications you wanna receive or not receive. Here are the switches and you can uh, do your custom thing. Pretty important because if DevOps get noisy in your mail account uh, on this mail, uh, so um, that gets annoying. And this list, where does it come from? Let's head over to the admin. Now I'm the admin again. It's coming from the notifications here. So you can decide on a global level which notifications you wanna uh, provide and not provide. You can disable them. And if you disable them globally, then uh, you know it's not available here anymore uh, because uh, or is switched off. So you have multiple areas where you can do this and uh, you can decide who gets it and whatever. Okay, but now on the user level, okay, I can manage this. Is a question pretty often asked by people. How can I get rid of this stuff? Then you have two themes. Actually, you can, I think, install more themes from the marketplace, but you need the a right to do it. Um, you can watch some statistics um, on your usage and what you, what you did uh, all the time and how you logged in. And now that comes a pretty important thing, security, because it confuses people all the time. Okay, let's go here. Uh, first of all, what you should do as a user on a new organization is create yourself a new personal access token because you will need it on several places. For instance, you could need it when you decide that you, you know, go here and make a Git clone later on, on this Azure DevOps, and you m might, um, uh, or finally you come to the point, the cloning is pretty working right off the place, but then when you fetch or you push or whatever, he needs to have a security token for this. And we switched on, and remember in the global security settings that uh, OAuth is used, so that's why DevOps decides, okay, you have to authenticate yourself and the way to authenticate yourself is a personal access token. The way of choice, there are different ways too, but let's uh, do it. So you generate a new token and basically you're saying, okay, that is my PAT uh, for uh, coding freaks. Oh, let's say it is. You can name it like you want in the organization coding freaks or you can decide, you know what, I want a personal access token, which is valid across all organizations I'm a member of. So how long is it valid? So you can, the, the maximum which you can reach is if you go to custom, custom defined, you can test it out here. So let's go over to 2021. Okay, see October and October, you are maximized to 2nd um, October, 2nd of October 2021. So one year is the maximum. So now you can define what um, scopes are included in the token, which is retrieved during the OAuth authentication process. You can have the easy way, just say full access. Um, be aware here, it's pretty dangerous. Because that is uh, pretty important because you normally, you would do a full access. Full access means whatever you are capable of, okay? Full access. Let, let's do first of all this token and be aware to save this token because this is the last time you see it uh, as usual. So let's go ahead and I, I just save this token uh, somewhere. This is uh, later on in my key pass. Uh, let me go ahead and PAT full 
access and then I store it. And I have to remember to um, refresh it at some point in time. Uh, it, it will expire. Okay, cool. That was the first token. I can use this token whenever I'm sitting, let's say, in front of a desk, uh, in front of a screen, and I'm, I'm me and I'm doing stuff um, inside of Azure DevOps. It's like a new password. Okay. So now I'm generating a new token and I'm calling it um, pad coding freaks uh, for services. So what this thing is, let's say 90 days and I'll throw it away just, I, I will, I hit him. Where is it? Did I click something wrong? Okay. Once again, I just clicked on the wrong point, coding freaks services. Let's say I want to authorize a step later on in a build pipeline, maybe, or something like that. Steps like that, which will access DevOps itself, need a permission to do it and um, need an authentication. So in order to authenticate those steps, the current way to go according to the Microsoft um, uh, way is to use a PAT, a personal access token. So what that means is you have to define a PAT as a user, which should not be your full access personal access token because other people can see it later on and you don't want to use it. So maybe you're even calling it differently. But anyway, let's say 90 days. And now you want to define what exactly this thing can do. So maybe you want to uh, just limit it to packages and that's it. Okay, you just leave this one. And this token is just capable of doing packaging. That's all. You can have more scopes, be aware of this. So you can see here, um, read, create and manage files, uh, read, query and manage service connections. What this is, we come later on. Symbol servers, uh, task groups, team dashboard, management, whatever. And if you define it in the pretty narrow scope, you can give away this token um, uh, pretty, uh, pretty without having the fear to losing it uh, or to losing control. Uh, you have to check this out. Um, this is pretty important. And uh, remember this token which you have. So if you are on the... Um, uh, on the Linux and Git side and whatever, you can uh, create SSH keys. So first of all, and there's a description, you, you need a description and there's a help page in front of it and then you need the key data, which here is standing uh, how you can uh, create all this stuff here, generate an SSH key and then you do this and then you can use this SSH key, for instance, to put it uh, here in the Git setup so Git will use the SSH public key to access DevOps. And then alternate credentials can be stored inside of DevOps. I won't use this too heavy. Uh, you can read here because uh, I would like to skick, uh, stick to the uh, OAuth and SSH based ways. Authorization, um, please try again later. So when you go here as a user, as an admin, I think you will see this. Yeah, you can see here um, the projects you have authorizations on um, and uh, the old apps which are already via my account are authorized. So everything is cool with my account and that's it. Okay, um, so last thing, maybe again here in the admin thing, if I go to DevOps here, Coding Freaks is selected. Last thing is the preview features pane, which is pretty interesting. So Microsoft does this currently in a lot of projects uh, or, or products, not projects. And as you can see, a lot of preview features are already switched on. And if they are switched on, that doesn't mean you can go back. You just see hints here and there. Uh, here's a preview feature. Do you want to use this or go back? And you have, for instance, experimental themes. Let's go here and go to the, uh, I think it was the uh, profile and then the theme. And now you see the custom themes, which weren't there before because I just switched on the preview feature experimental themes. So let's switch it off. 
uh, and go here and now you see the effect um, and then preview features analytics view and I'm not able to do this currently and that's it and um, keep this in mind and keep in mind because I'm the owner and can do this for everyone so I can decide now that experimented team themes are for everyone another important thing DevOps is all about extensibility and you should use this button at least to um, take a look uh, as the owner into the marketplace. Um, it sounds like you have to spend money, but that's not the case. You see here, free, free, free or uh, free stuff like that. One thing I can suggest is the code search. Let me search it. This is pretty cool because uh, it extends the search bar um, on top of this and I just get it for free just to show you the experience. And he's redirecting me. I, I don't like this because they don't have a basket and you have always, you have go through whole the process and stuff like that. Interestingly, interestingly enough, everybody can do this. I just show it in a second with the other guy here with coding freaks who is not an admin remember and now you know that's what i mean so here you can see it already there's the search and then you can do a lot of cool stuff like line search type search directly in the browser and that's pretty pretty interesting you should uh, install this guy and parallel this guy can go to the marketplace too Although he's not an admin, he can go to the um, marketplace and let's say code search is already coming. Uh, what else can I um, can I give you? No, no, no. Let me see. Um, let me see what what I'm going to give you. Code search, pull request, merge. Let ah test and feedback is pretty uh, pretty nice. Uh, so uh, you have explore, uh, exploratory testing in the browser that could be pretty cool and I, I like that but I'm not an admin I go here oh that was a bad example because you don't have to do anything so let's say I want this guy from Microsoft DevLabs get it free and now uh, let's let this uh, thing work he's saying coding freaks and he's saying, you know what, you are not able to just buy the stuff and compare this. Uh, let me go here. Let's uh, put them side by side. On the left hand side, I'm the admin and I want to install cold search. On the right hand side, uh, I'm not an admin. I want to install this. So this guy is saying, OK, uh, I want this pretty hard. Please. No. Don't make mistakes in money requests. Okay, and then you go, you see request, or if you have an on-prem, you can go and ahead and download it for the on-prem installation. Okay, I request it. Something will happen. And as an admin, I go ahead and install just a code search, um, proceed to my organization, and uh, now code search is installed. And to be honest, uh, I don't know exactly where this request is i think by mail it's coming by mail and i can then decide to uh, do this the request itself oh here it is uh, okay here it is so i can go there in the organization settings you see i don't do this pretty often in the extensions and go to the request and i see this i got a mail i think too and i can go ahead and say I want this pretty hard okay and then I can say you know what approve give it and now I'm installing this extension it's free um, into the DevOps organization and he can refresh his browser and he will see maybe requested by it is resolved by it is not resolved currently we have to wait here and you can imagine what happened so with this, uh, there it is, install. Okay, and now refresh and then we have the complete, that's it. Installed, everything is cool. And we should see uh, on another level that it was requested by me. But anyway, 
Um, so that was the thing for the first part. What we have now is an organization without any project. Um, we have the settings uh, so far as we need it and we are good to head over to the second part which is uh, team project initialization. Let me know if I should change something, if you find it helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.